once it is determined that a person who suffers mental shock and injury is entitled to compensation on the principles stated above the difficult question arises what should be the amount of damages for such loss caused by wrongful act of a party there can be no yardstick or definite principle for assessing damages in such cases the damages are meant to compensate a party who suffers an injury it may be bodily injury loss of reputation business and also mental shock and suffering so far nervous shock is concerned it depends upon the evidence produced to prove the nature extent and magnitude of such suffering but even on that basis usually it becomes difficult to assess a fair compensation and in those circumstances it is the discretion of the judge who may on facts of the case and considering how far the society would deem it to be a fair sum determines the amount to be awarded to a person who has suffered such a damage the conscience of the court should be satisfied that the damages awarded would if not completely satisfactorily compensate the aggrieved party para it is by now a well established principle that the person claiming special damages has to prove each item of loss with reference to the evidence brought on record and for general damages as claimed by the petitioner relating to mental torture agony defamation and financial loss those are to be assessed following the rule of thumb and the said exercise falls in the discretionary jurisprudence jurisdiction of the court which has to decide it in the facts and circumstances of each case the courts below having appreciated the evidence led have already determined the damages to which petitioner could be entitled in order to show that the amount of damages that determined by the learner division bench why did the impugned judgment is not commensurate with the extent of shock and injury suffered by the petitioner he has placed on record photocopies of certain documents which were never tendered in evidence during trial or appeal these documents at this belated stage are of no avail to him at no stage the petitioner filed application for additional evidence either the concurrent findings of fact in the afore referred circumstances have not been found by us to be against the record and the law declared the petition lacking in merit is accordingly dismissed and leave refused full stop